Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is a clip from my interview with Rolling Stones recording engineer Tapani Tallo. If you want to see the full interview, it's linked below. So one of the things I find interesting about the time period you worked with the Stones is when you started working with them, Mick Taylor was in the band, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and, yeah. and then by the end, it was Ronnie Wood, if, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? The, that was a huge week. Uh, we were at the airport going to Rotterdam and, uh, and Mick Taylor jumps up at the airport and says, I'm not going. <laughs> really? And uh, so we went, we went to Rotterdam and Ian Stewart started calling up people and he wanted to get Eric Clapton and all that people, but Jeff Beck was there. Okay. And that, that would have been dangerous. That would have killed the band. Hmm. Why do you feel that and, way? Uh, oh, because he actually immediately took charge of the, uh, the groove. Hmm. I mean, it, it did not match Keith and didn't match the, um, the drumming of Charlie. I mean, Charlie has this uh, really uh, jazz blues kind of swing to it. Hmm. And Jeff Peck started to have this. <laughs> and uh, hmm. and that, no, that was scary. I mean, it literally was a. Uh, and then when as soon as uh, Ronnie hit the hit the deck, it was like, hey, this is Stones. That's cool. <laughs> So do you know why Mick Taylor left the band? Was there any particular reason? Yeah, he didn't really, um, he was not able to communicate with the band. He just played. Hmm. He uh, he was very lonely. And the time, I oh, was half a year with him. I don't really spoke once. It just, I asked him maybe once or twice, do you like a coffee or something? He said, no. Really? <laughs> and it was that, he was, he was, yeah, he was dipping into stuff and being hmm. very low. Quite frankly, when when I worked with Mick, yeah, he wouldn't even have a half a glass of wine. Hmm. I mean, I, I was struck. I remember having lunch with him in this big ca country house. That's where we used to do the recordings. We were sitting down, and the uh, the lady who was we always had a somebody who was cooking and taking care of the food around right. us. And she said, "Have some of the wine." And Mick said, "Nope." <laughs> so even though he was sober from alcohol, he was still struggling with the other stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, wow. well, um, would that be would it be fair to say that was the only reason he left, or was it just he just wanted to do something else? Well, it, you have to understand. I mean, when you, I saw with the other bands too. If you were not really like the like Mick and Mick and Keith, the the synchronization of their opinions and the way they would bring it up and how they would communicate to each other. I mean. It was stupendous. Hmm. There was no, if somebody said something, it really meant something. But hmm. uh, Mick Taylor had no, uh, he could not communicate anything. He just played his part. Hmm. Same like Bill. Uh, Bill Wyman was the same way. Do you know why Bill was able to last for 30 years, but Mick wasn't? Like, if considering they both had that similar personality, well, how come one was able to survive, the other didn't, so to speak? I would say there's a, there's a tremendous work ethic difference with the generation of Bill and Mick Taylor. Hmm. Even even Eric Clapton, where they grew up, they they grew up in a uh, British working class, really tough working class env environment, and that has a that really helps you if you're in the music business. I mean, it really helps you to have strength and focus, and because you knew where you came from, you and you, you went through all the obstacles and you got through and all that stuff. And Mick Taylor, I think, was just on the on the next wave, kind of. Didn't have the same uh, roughness. So it wasn't really a musical difference when it came to Mick's departure. It was more, I guess, the personalities just didn't click long term. Would that be fair to right. say? And Bill's, Bill's bass player playing, everybody agreed. It, it was, it just fit the mold. I mean, it, there was no question about that. I remember talking to other other people in the uh, on the sound part, the uh, the main guys. They said they were just always loved with loved Bill Space. How would you compare Mick Taylor with Ronnie Wood? Like, what's similar and different about them in terms of their guitar playing and how you work with them in the studio? Mick Taylor. I mean, he he brought the sky into the band. Oh, <laughs> it cool. was, and then he had that unknown quality that it just. Just to open up that poetry side of the uh, hmm. stones, without interfering in any other way. He wouldn't. He didn't interfere with Keith at all. I mean, 
you just couldn't do it better. But in a Ronnie, Ronnie actually is very much in the in the groove, Keith's groove in the sense that they both know how to uh, they make the people move in the audience. Mm. I mean that that is, and which is a in, well, that's why Ronnie Wood is and Keith are great, both of them, and they complement each other. They don't. I actually recorded some a couple of their show endings just because when they really got going, it was just a bloody amazing. <laughs> that's cool. 